Hi, my name is Pavel Spechalski and let me show you a little something I'm working currently for INAF. But bear in mind, this is, um, how to tell it, overkill. This is something that probably less than 1% of the INAF users will use. However, something that's really opening a lot of possibilities in terms of autonomous flight and uh, let's say not so obvious usages for the INAF itself. Because, because if we go to the INAF configurator, you might know that here in the mixer there is this logic condition button. And if you click it, then you can do something. What? Simple stuff, like for example, uh, somewhere in the January, Painless 360 showed how to change the VTX output power based on range or based on the switches on your radio, uh, automatically or semi-automatically, so you can change the VTX output power somewhere in flight. However, however, let me close this thing and when you one day will flash INAV 2.5 and download the INAV configurator 2.5, you will notice that here, over here, is a new tab. The new tab is called programming yeah programming and using this new tab called programming you will be actually able in um, using the graphical interface to write simple programs for INAV if this then that if whatever well, not whatever. What can be if? What can be input? For example, a switch position. Or, for example, the flight parameter, or flight time, or altitude, or speed, or... You name it. The list of the possible operators over here, for example, RC channel, so any value of any channel, flight parameter like arm timer, cell voltage, RSSI, altitude is armed, certain flags about the, the flight itself, which flight mode is activated, which other logic condition is activated and which value is passed to this logic condition and also you can get a value from something that is called global variable because um, this is almost the this is almost a programming language and probably this whole framework of the logic conditions and the global functions is Turing complete and if anybody out there is a developer should mean what does uh, Turing complete is and it's very very close to something called the PLC programmable logic controller but I'm like going slightly slightly too forward and after writing a simple program and assigning something to a global variable or activating some kind of the override which is a global function for example you can override arming safety or you can override throttle scale swap pitches uh, uh, swap axes excuse me uh, set VTX power level. In the next uh, next versions there will be also VTX channel, VTX band and set override to the RC channel. Really, whatever, really, almost whatever you want. Or for example, override the throttle to create a lamp home mode when after the voltage drops below certain certain value just motor stop, uh, motor is limited to let's say 50% power. Doable? Doable. You will be able to react how INAF will behave in certain conditions. I, just for kicks, because there are really like dozens different possible combinations, I can, for example, today I can show you how to make a servo sweep. So that one of the servos will be going from one position to the second position constantly because Oh no, no, the servo sweep is not the best condition. Better let's make a function that will trigger a servo to move to a certain uh, position every five seconds. For example, to take a photo uh, of something uh, of the ground uh, below the uh, UAV. Or for example, I don't know, to drop a bomb uh, or of course not arm bomb, only toy bombs are allowed or anything else you really want. For example, our first condition will be that every tenth of the seconds we will increase the global variable zero by one and active always. You see, 
the global variable is growing and at one point they will go to the thousands value. Every five seconds. And that means that every some times we will have to reset the timer because variable zero will be acting as a timer to zero. So let's make another condition and the condition will be if greater than global variable zero than 55 then okay status blue that means it's currently active and global variable set variable zero zero value zero if logic condition one let's save look the counter counts to 55 and then go back to zero why 55 uh, because we want our servo to move to the to the other other position every 55 seconds. We also would like to have something assigned to a global variable one because this will be our output to a servo. So let's uh, assign global variable set, global variable one. Let's assign value 500, no, minus 500 because we want to zero the the thing when the logic condition one is blue. So right now we have minus 500, the servo moved to the one of the positions. Next, when five seconds passed, so if greater than global variable zero, then 50, we have always, so see, it will, when the timer go 50 and it moved, and if this is set to 1, then let's... No, excuse me, this is value. When the global, var global condition 4, then write 500 to a servo. Working? Working. What now only we have to do? Get one servo, assign global variable one to it, and ta -da! we have a trigger assigned to a servo that every five seconds will trigger a servo for half a second so that a camera connected to the, uh, to the servo will make a picture or make a sound or light the lights or whatever really, whatever you want. What else? Like I said, the amount of options that you can you can do over there with the global variables and the logic conditions is almost unlimited because it's almost like the programming language. I showed you example how to make a timer and uh, as a position for a timer, okay, you see, this was the servo doing something. Uh, this is also only one of the possibilities. If only I will add the possibility to, for example, set the RC channel to any value using global functions, you will be able to build the no fencing. Because if the distance from home will be higher than one kilometer, activate return to home. Go fencing done. No need for special uh, special stuff to be able to do this. If um, I'm just like, you know, looking for uh, possibilities, um, you can, for example, you can control one servo using a switch and change the position of the servo. When a switch is moved up, then the servo will move one direction. If the switch is down, then the servo will move a second direction. Um, because why? Because, for example, one of the potentiometers is used for something else and you would like to use it as the uh, pan servo for your camera. Or if you really, really want to, you can, you, even right now, you can build a very simple PID controller, for example, for trying to implement your own uh, um, I don't know, altitude hold based on uh, on something. The amount of, the number of possibilities is, well, um, almost unlimited. Over the next few months, probably, excuse me, I will try to get together a list of things that you can do, that you can do with this functionality and start writing tutorials and examples how you will be able to use this 
advanced stuff uh, for your liking. But bear in mind, um, this also means that right now INA3 does not have to be on the flying thingy because you can use this as the educational platform. You can drive a robot with it. Or for example, this this and this is really um, I already showed some people my INA rover. If for example now I will put the wrench finder on the on the front, I will be able using those logic conditions and the global variables, I will be able to make the obstacle, 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 obstacle avoidance routine. Why? Because it's only a programming language. Okay, um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's fine. It's really fine. It's understandable. Like I said in the beginning, this is the for the power users and the users that really would like to build something out of the box. Uh, because, for example, from time to time, we are getting a request of something that's uh, very special uh, to a certain person, like for example this uh, servo timer to trigger a camera, or for example possibility because why not? Uh, it's also it also will be doable to switch the the change the value of the VTX using one of the potentiometers from 200 to 800, or for example to change the uh, channel of the VTX possible with the global variables. Like I said, the more examples will follow in the future videos over the next few few at least months, but it, you will be able to try to use this functionality only after the INAV 2.5 will be released. So uh, this time, yeah, that's definitely enough for today. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one. Bye bye. Oh, and by the way, yeah, if you really like me like what I'm doing over this crazy idea and you think that I would like to see more of those crazy, crazy, crazy things I'm developing, please consider becoming my patron on the Patreon. So, until the next one. Bye-bye.